Chubby Denter. You are listening to the Cyber Cafe Holiday Special, a ball of festive cheer sliding down the chimney of your ears to kindle the fireplace of your heart, your heart. So that's Hanukkah dusted. Only two more days till Christmas. There are other holidays, you know. Yeah, yeah, and three more till Boxing Day. Don't forget Kwanzaa. Gonna level with you, I don't think anyone who celebrates Kwanzaa is listening. If you mention holidays, you should be comprehensive. Festivus? Yeah, remind them of one of the most popular sitcoms of all time. Great opening gambit. Opening gambit? Like, uh, opening the store that we work at. Are you feeling okay? I don't really get the December holidays. Idol Feeder was a while back, but it's hard to meaningfully fast as a brain in a jar. I remember you made me wait until sundown to refresh your nutrient slurry. I wanted to get everyone gifts this year, you know, secular friendship gifts, but it's tricky without any arms. I'd have to order online, and online shopping always gives me the heebies. Like Amazon makes their workers skip breaks and penalizes them for going to the bathroom, and they end up peeing themselves. If I wanted to give you guys something dripping with urine and psychic dread, I'd just shop at Salvation Army. So I'm abstaining from giving anyone gifts for ethical reasons. And you're broke. And I'm broke. But mostly principled stand. You're welcome. You're welcome. It's okay. I hate Christmas anyway. Aren't you like mentally four? Shut up, Emily. I'm a grown up. I'm gonna go shove it a walk. Oh, is it snowing? Nah, people just love to throw out their garbage whenever they pass by the store. Store looks great, Emily. I'm not sure about the tinsel, though. It's exposed wiring. Don't touch it. What? You only gave us five bucks to decorate the store, so I went down to the dump, found some old plasma TVs, and stripped the wires. And the twinkling lights. Power buttons. People throw out a lot of TVs. I was wondering why you plugged them into my cooler instead of the wall. If that thing ran straight through the wall outlet, anyone who touched it would cook like a festive Christmas goose. The tree at least is safe as long as it's nowhere near an open flame. I sculpted that out of trash people leave in front of the store. It gets me in a jolly mood. Sam, can you play some secular holiday classic songs? Can we afford any? Not really. Thanks to Disney lobbyists, songs don't enter public domain until 300 years after they were written. So what old carols can we use that are still secular? God rest ye merry gentlemen doesn't specify which god. It definitely does. Oh. I guess I used different lyrics. I went to an interfaith school. How did your version go? In Bethlehem in Israel this blessed babe came nigh and grew into the king of kings or maybe just some guy. Ah, oh, the radio edit. That song always reminds me of mom. I remember over the holidays once when I was four years old, my ma couldn't find a daycare that was open over Christmas so she had no choice but to look after me at home. We got snowed in up in her chalet. The power went out. The servants couldn't make it through the blizzard. It was just Ma and me. I had my first glass of champagne because it was the least alcoholic of her provisions. You said you were four? Four and a half, which can be quite a handful, so I don't blame her for spending much of the holiday locked in her room. But as night fell, after the sun set over the Shebshi Mountains, she lit a fire using some of my baby blankets and school pictures and had me sing austere Christmas carols. God rest ye merry gentlemen, good King Wenceslas. I believe it's pronounced Vonceslas. Vencicles. There was one carol she wrote for herself. Children are a blessing cause they're tax deductible. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It didn't even rhyme. Tell you what, let's skip the music and just dim the lights a little. Sam, can you turn down the voltage on the exposed Christmas wires? Sure thing, boss. Oh no, did the lights come unplugged? Don't worry guys, I got it. 
No, honey, not the wall outlets. Ah, great googly moogly. <laughs> honey, honey, are you okay? Speak to me. The sum of the square roots of any two sides of an isosceles triangle can't be used to predict the square root of the opposing side. They're unrelated. Unless it's right isosceles. I mean, they're still related because of the trigonometric functions that define a triangle, but... Oh, hi, Emony! What did you just say? Just a thing I've been trying to figure out for years. Something to do with the... triambles? What about triambles? I forget. Honey, does this mean your brain just needs more electricity to work better? Did you come with a charge cable? Yeah, but you know how it is with those things. I lost it almost immediately. There's kind of a cutesy body horror to you, isn't there? Hey guys, is... is Sam okay? Oh no! Sam! Sam! Speak to me, Sam! Sam? Emily, he doesn't have a pulse. You're feeling the outside of a plastic jar. And it doesn't have a pulse! I've called the paramedics. The last thing we need to do is panic. Yeah, right. Don't panic. Don't panic. Stop panicking, Emily! I can see the panic in your eyes judging me. Stop it! Get a hold of yourself, man. Don't do that! My reflexes will kick in and- Put me down! Good thing the ambulance is almost here. Wonderful. They said he was brain dead. He was miserable enough when he was brain alive. It's not my fault, is it? Am I a murderer? You let him get shot the first time. It seems right somehow that this strange, disembodied coda to his life was bookend by your negligence. Hey, I didn't make the stupid Christmas lights. It's Emily's fault. It's my fault you jammed a coil of copper wire into a wall outlet. Fine, if we're passing the bucket's Moose's fault for making us decorate in a Dog May 95 budget. Girls, girls, we all share the responsibility for Sam's death. So really, none of us should feel all that guilty. Besides, I bet you'll change your tune when you know why I cheaped out on the decorations. Your holiday bonuses. The place still smells of charred brain meats. If you want to pool your bonuses and get an air freshener, that's fine with me. I can't have this conversation. I'm going for a walk. What's going on? Sam! Oh gosh, how long have I been out since Honey electrocuted me? You remember that. Good. Um, maybe you should read this. Uh, I'll hold it in front of your camera. Dear Mr. Mustafa, congratulations on your return from the dead following your recent exposure to the mighty power of electricity that man boldly harnessed from the gods. Unusual letter. You were clinically dead for one hour, but the modern Prometheus, Dr. West M.D., managed to resurrect you using medical techniques that would have been unheard of only last year. Your medical debt now totals $4,000. Hey, that's less than I owed before. Merry Christmas to me! Uh, there's a page break in the middle of the figure there. Four billion dollars. Because the interest on this debt now far exceeds your ability to pay, your debt collection agency, Smiling Valley Debt Services, will be repossessing you. Why didn't they just let me die? You still owed them a lot for the last time you died. If you had died now, they'd just have to give up on getting it back. It's a lot more economical to keep people alive for hundreds of years as indentured servants. Indentured servants? Congress decided it's morally different from owning slaves, but I'm not clear how. I think it's because you're not owned by a person, you're owned by a collective of shareholders. So don't worry, Sam, you're technically not going to be a slave. We will install your brain into a mining drone to join our happy debtor family gathering conflict minerals in New Lagos for the next 4,000 years, plus APR. A Black Ops team will be dispatched to pick you up at midnight tonight, December 24th. Yours sincerely, the Smiling Valley Debt Service Customer Retention Center, a subsidiary of Amazon.
Oh, and look at the bottom. P.S. We hope the fasts of Ramadan brought you closer to Allah. I thought that was thoughtful of them. Corporations are woke now. Could... Could one of you kill me before they pick me up? How do you want it, fast or slow? Honey, no. They just bring them back to life. Those monsters. Sam, uh, we... Wanted to spend one last night here with you. One night together. That we all called our loved ones to tell them we couldn't make Christmas Eve this year. And then we realized we didn't have any loved ones, so it's just as well. This isn't a very happy episode of our lives. I'm going to go leave my mommy an abusive voicemail. Sam, are you awake? I sure hope not. I got you a present. A secular interfaith wintertime present. That's very sweet. I passed this kid playing in the street with a remote-controlled drone. It made me think about life, you know? He seemed like a real spoiled brat. Kind of just leave his toys out whenever he goes in for supper. Kid must take all his blessings for granted, and I I thought about you and how you'd probably love to have a drone to fly around with. Feel freedom the way you never could, stuck in the jar. So you saved up to get me a drone? Nah, I stole the kids. Can you network with it? Uh, let me see. I can! This is neat! Thanks, Emily! Look at this! Woo! Ah! On second thought, uh, how, how about we don't fly this indoors? Put it away. This is my last night alive before I get turned into an undying robot slave miner. Fine, then I'll, I'll put it outside. There, now you're free as a bird. Wait, watch out for that! Thanks, Emily. You're my best friend. You don't want some stolen present anyway. I don't like this time of year, but because I care about you guys, I knitted you all sweaters out of discarded straw wrappers as a symbol of how much I care, and because the piles of garbage in front of our store are really getting hard to hop across. Aww. Emily, here's yours. I didn't know your size, so I just went with something vaguely bean-shaped. Cheers. And you, Sam. I guess it's n- not a sweater as so much as a jar cozy. If I'd have known all this would happen, I'd have sized it for your mining robot body, but they'd probably burn it to break your spirit anyway. Honey, how about instead of depressing Sam, you look at the present I got you. Here, this should help you count change for customers. Oh! A poster with all the numbers! Up to 20. Yeah, all the numbers. Up to 20. Did you get Moose anything? Yeah, I got him the poster to help Honey count better. You know, help an employee count fish, you save some time. Teach an employee to count fish, you save a lot more. Well, I'll take it, but I still don't like Christmas. It's a holiday about childlike wonder and innocence. How is it not your favorite day? Do you know wheelchair Becky? Does she come in on Wednesdays? She told me her name was Bella. No, she was a Barbie doll. She used a wheelchair, hence the name. Thanks. Didn't her wheelchair not even fit in the Barbie dream house? I didn't know you played with Barbies. That's adorable. I have a lot of time to read, okay? It might surprise you to know that I blog a lot about disability rights. Yeah, you're a real pillar of the community. Well, a cylinder at any rate. The thing was, Becky didn't even fit into the Barbie car, right? But it was the 90s, so Mattel was still patting themselves on the back for having a disabled doll, and kids were always writing in asking them to remake the house, the car, everything so they'd fit Becky. She couldn't even fit in the dream house elevator, which seems like the first thing you'd check. So they re-released the toys so she could fit? No, they discontinued Becky. They could have made a fortune selling wheelchair-accessible merch, but they preferred to just not have Becky exist anymore. And if you want a more perfect metaphor for how we treat disabled people, I'm not sure what to tell you. Bandai never made ableist faux pas like that when they were selling Digimon merchandise. So here's me trying to get all Barbie's friends, and the only one I need is Becky. And she's been discontinued for decades, so she's like a million dollars. And Santa just keeps giving me new Barbies. Dr. Barbie, Pregnant Barbie, Lenny Riefenstahl Cosplay Barbie, a dozen women with the same face, all reflections of a theme. How am I meant to play with 12 identical copies of the same woman? Are they clones? Is this time travel? Santa, why are you ruining playtime? And that was how you realized Santa doesn't exist? He doesn't what now? He... finish your story. Look, Emily, 
I know that you probably only got coal for Christmas. Kept me going through the winter, did that coal. But if you're good, you get toys. Santa makes all the toys he gives out up at the North Pole, which means they're bootlegs, sure. But the packaging looks right, so it's fine. But he never even wanted to make a bootleg wheelchair Becky for me. Why not? What does he have against people who need mobility devices? So I stopped writing him letters and he stopped giving me presents, which is fine by me. I'm not going to support an elf who hates both copyright law and disabled people. Wow, honey. I didn't know you had trauma like that. I don't like to talk about it. I don't want to lose my cool devil-may-care reputation. What was that? Sounded like up on the housetop. Jack boots. That'll be my ride, huh? <laughs> I had so much to say to you guys, but I guess there's never enough time. I'm going to miss you, idiots. Will you remember me? I could never forget you, Sam. Will you write? Can you read? If we're both still alive whenever they release me, I'll be in touch. Let's meet up here. I'll come every day to see if you're free, no matter how many centuries it takes. Oh, please. Sam, society doesn't have that long left. I give it five years. That's what we say every five years. The revolution is coming, eventually. And when it arrives, my platoon of cyber goths will come rescue you. You'll be my second in command, and we can get revenge on everyone who hurt us. Okay? And when the class war is over, we can... We can go get tacos, okay? Yeah, sounds good. Tell Moose thanks, and I love you guys. We love you, too. Yeah. Where are they? I hate long goodbyes. You've got mail. Wait, I've got email. How did you know? Mega Snatter storming the building and you check your email? Hey, I may never get to check it again. It's from Smiling Valley. Dear Mr. Mustafa, a wealthy benefactor has bought your debt to us. You now owe... Uh, still too many zeros, but... Guys, I can stay here. They're not going to take me. It'll still be 400 years to pay off my debt by working here, but I'll probably be senile by then anyway. That's wonderful. Sam, it's midnight. I know, Moose. Thank you so much. What? You got your mommy to purchase my debt, didn't you? Bless the small business owners. They will lead us to a better tomorrow. No, we won't. Uh, what happened? Well, someone saved me. Someone with very deep pockets. Then who's that upstairs? Ho, ho, ho! Merry Christmas! Believe in Jesus! Ho, ho, ho! You gotta be friggin' kidding me. Honey, what's that under Emily's garbage tree? This? An American with Disabilities Act compliant Barbie dream house! And... Still no wheelchair, Becky. It's rubbing my nose in it. Screw you, old man, and your magic horsies, too. Moose, how did you arrange all this? I'm telling you, I didn't. My mommy hates me. And she hasn't done anything this big for Christmas since the year she really got into Die Hard. Rich people are weird. So the logical conclusion is that magic exists and it's evangelically Christian. Did the creepy old elf leave you anything, Moose? Happy employees, honey. That's all I need for Christmas. Oh my gosh. Someone's torrenting Digimon again. The uncut subtitled version uncompromised by the gaijin who don't appreciate high art. Prodigious. It's a Christmas miracle. Smiling faces, that's all I need. Watch Digimon with me, Moose. It's a season of goodwill, but there are limits. Night, everybody. So, was it Moose's mom? I don't see how it would be. I guess we'll have to make peace with not knowing. I don't like mysteries like this. Christmas is scary. It really is. God help us, everyone. Ho, ho, ho! Go to church! Tithe more! Merry Christmas! Ho, 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 ho!
You are still listening to the Cyber Cafe Holiday Special. Now that we've lulled you to sleep with our gentle festive story, sub subliminal messaging. You love Cyber Cafe. You want to tell all your friends about Cyber Cafe. You want to kiss Cyber Cafe on the lips. Ken, Ken, no. They might still be awake. Aw, heck, you're right. Here, to make sure you're under, here's a piece we like to call The Killbot That Saved Christmas. Really, like, get a lot of, of face right. acting. Yes, right? face. Face acting. <laughs> Merry Christmas, everybody! Merry. Can we, can we start that? <laughs> <laughs> Let's introduce the dramatis personae. <laughs> All right, introducing the dramatis personae uh, Erica, a nerd, Flanders. An old nerd, uh. Ralph, a dork, and janitor, an enigma. <laughs> Merry Christmas, everybody! Merry Christmas. Christmas is still a week away. Oh, I know, but I'm heading out today, so it's my last chance to say Merry Christmas before 2002. Okay, well, have a nice vacation, boss. Thanks. Boss? Yes? Why are you still here? Oh, I'm making the most of the holidays, Erica. I've got a list. <clears throat> Happy Saturnalia, everybody! Happy Saturnalia. Does anybody even celebrate that? <laughs> it's never too late to start celebrating something, Miss Ebenezer Scrooge. Then why not just fold it in with a generalized Happy Holidays? If I list every single one, then we're spreading out the festivity as long as possible. Except for the winter solstice. That's more of an introspective, solemn time. Happy Hanukkah! Not Jewish. I'll have you know, La Fiesta de Santa Maria de Guadalupe is a time for finding new faith. Or arbitrarily swapping it around? Now you're getting in the Kwanzaa spirit! <sighs> I'm really gonna miss you, boss. Oh, same here, Erica. Well, enjoy Panchagona Party. What am I saying? Oh, may the bajanio sweetly ring in your ears. She forgot Festivus. I thought she would never go. Well, she's just trying to spread some positivity. Doesn't the snow get you thinking of warm nights, open fires, eggnog? No, and I don't believe in Santa Claus either. It's all a humbug. You're the humbug. No, the word humbug means deception. I'm being honestly sad, which makes me a darn sight less of a humbug than all the holiday cheer you're demanding, despite the fact that statistically, most human beings alive today are either starving children or spousal abusers. <sighs> now get out of my office. I'm not in your office. Not by three inches. Let's expand that margin. Leave me alone. Erica. Do you think you'd be cheerier if you didn't surround yourself with these giant toy robots? They're models. Fine, Erica. These killbot models. You think that might be a bit of a downer? You think that's maybe why people avoid you? It's like collecting Nazi memorabilia. <laughs> maybe you have a genuine historical interest, but the odds are against you. The killbot? The Killbot is a beautiful example of industrial design. It's simultaneously friendly and handsome, with powerful joints and flexible hard points. Ah, an aesthetic triumph that killed millions of innocent people. Giant robots didn't kill people. Despotic governments buying military hardware from unscrupulous giant robot manufacturers killed people. It's a good machine. You're an engineer, you know I'm right. In the giant robot wars, this machine was the last thing innocent civilians saw before they died. It's not a happy machine. 
however handsome it may be. You know, in the 1964 World's Fair, when Jan Schmidt and Hermann Meyer unveiled the original Killbot, it was for peaceful, agricultural applications. <laughs> the Hobot. <laughs> And the very next year, Uncle Sam sent a squadron of hobots to flatten East Berlin. Were they still handsome? Schmidtenmeyer didn't plan for that. They didn't control it. They didn't even consider it. That's the problem. Even when the World's Fair ended, no farmers wanted a hundred-foot-tall tractor. And when the only interested party was the U.S. military, Herman Meyer never stopped to think about why they wanted it. That doesn't redeem him. A machine is only as good or bad as the people using it. The inventor is innocent. Look at it from a purely scientific perspective. Less than 30 years ago, the giant robot was the single biggest leap our technology had taken since the printing press. What about the flushing toilet? I've had this robot toy since I was three. My mom gave it to me. She said, look, it's the RX-78, the same one your daddy's piloting out in Ghana. Every day I'd watch the news with my mom, three years old, hoping to see a picture of my father. And every day I'd bring this toy to preschool and tell everyone that was my dad defending our freedom. And then the UN had its say and my mom stopped pointing out my daddy on the news, even when they showed his photo in the war crimes trials. I thought The Hague was the name of his robot. I'm so sorry. I, I didn't know. I just, I always thought if I went into engineering, I could find ways to use giant robots to help people. And instead, what do I design here? Blenders. Hey, don't sneer at blenders. My niece says that juicing is all the rage on her softball team. I never knew softball was so competitive. Yeah, you remind me of an old friend of mine. That true, old timer? Yep. We used to go skiing around this time every year, back when our bones were better. He always said, don't blame technology for the evils of man. But what can a bomb do besides kill? Controlled demolition. If we didn't have explosives, we'd never be able to destroy sports domes. Oh, yes. <laughs> of course, without bombs, the country would be overrun by football stadiums. It's hard enough to find parking on the north side. Ho, ho, ho. Hey, now you're getting festive. So, what's your big plan to make people trust robots again? We just have to change the narrative. I've been trying to design a robot made. I figure it needs to be unambiguously helpful. A robot made is a little... 1960s. Rubber suits, Sci-fi directors hiding their crotches. You know, don't you think? Uh, well, why not a butler? A butler has to buttle, answering doors, shepherding guests. Because of the history of robots, as you so eagerly remind me, a robot greeter might not always send the best signal. Or it might not receive the best signal, malfunction, and kill guests in their sleep. Well, just so. But... A robot maid could finish its job unobtrusively and then put itself away in a closet somewhere and no one would ever have to see it. Exactly, like, like, a, like an invisible man that digs through all of your things and then disappears without accounting for itself. <laughs> I'm beginning to see a flaw in this concept. Jeez, people are scared to see robots. They're scared not to see robots. Well, sure. People don't like robots. Robots kill people. Well, this one won't. She'll be nice and, and, and sweet and, and offer hugs on command. With a flywheel control for the hug intensity? Yes, now you're getting it. I knew you understood the appeal of a good robot. Uh, visually, though, it can't look humanoid. That's an immediate turnoff. There's the uncanny valley and, you know, all the murder. It would be like putting a nuclear hazard symbol on a hamburger wrapper. Well... I was looking at energy efficiency, and I thought we could minimize the size of things even further. Square, cu square cube rule, you know? Oh, kids would love a little robo-doggy. Oh, well, boss will want planned obsolescence. Move those units. 
When it starts needing new parts in two years, they're gonna be watching a dog die slowly. <laughs> That'll traumatize kids. We'll be back at square one. <sighs> okay, okay. Something you can't see decay. And so Erica DeShong and Doctor... Okay, who are you? And why are you here? I'm the janitor, and I'm the janitor. I don't recognize you. Would I scrub those toilets if I wasn't getting paid for it? Story checks out. <laughs> and so Erica DeShong and Dr. Flanders Tamino worked through the holly night and into the jolly day, all through the Jingle Bell week, building a robot for all the good girls and boys. And when they completed it, all were amazed. I'm awake, I'm awake, sorry. These couches are too comfortable. <laughs> Don't worry. I think we're done. You laid some terrific groundwork, and then I kind of ate too many peppermint squares and got too hopped up to sleep. I've been working all night like a pre-diabetic Christmas elf. So where are we now? I think we're done. It's gorgeous. It's my greatest work yet. It's everything I ever wanted. What shall we call it? We'll call it Killbot Model RX-93. Or, for consumers, the Roomba. <laughs> Roomba. Roomba. Oh, I'm sorry, I thought we were doing a thing. Yeah, it, it's my masterpiece. I'll set him up to clean up the office. Merry Christmas, old guy. Merry Christmas, whippersnapper. You know... I wasn't expecting to have such a good holiday this year. Oh? Can you keep a secret? For someone who stuck with me through all this, of course. My friend I was telling you about, the one you remind me of, he passed away a few weeks ago. Oh no, what of? A bad case of assassination. <laughs> People don't assassinate grandpas, Tamino. They do if they designed the robots that destroyed entire nations. What? Despite our moral disagreements, I believe that you are a good person. And because I respect you, I think you deserve to know that Flanders Tamino is just a pseudonym. <gasps> no! My real name is Jan Schmidt. Co-founder of the Swiss engineering atelier, Schmidtenmeyer. At the height of the Cold War, the United States government offered us immunity and false passports just to keep a technological edge against Ukraine. Herman Meyer is now dead despite his impenetrable cover identity, Stevie Wonder Sr. <laughs> <laughs> he has been avenged by the Kingdom of Ghana, or the Republic of France, or the matriarchy of Argentina. No matter who, I don't begrudge him his life or mine. When we began this week, I was preparing to die, Erica. And I wanted you, the next generation, to learn from my mistakes before it was too late. I may have squandered my talent, but there is still time for you. Make wonderful things, Erica. Kind things. And remember me. You're not a wise old sensei, Flanders, Yan, whatever your name is. I didn't ask for a life lesson. You ever see a toaster? Ah, a masterwork of non-violent engineering. No one ever went to The Hague over a toaster. What of it? Makes a terrific bludgeoning tool. What? Sharp edges, weighs a couple pounds. An enterprising psychopath could mug a dude using a toaster, you know. To say nothing of all the people who leave it plugged in when they hop in the bathtub. Don't be silly. Why would they need to make toast in the bathtub? Oh. Yeah. Oh, dark. Everything backfires, and everything can be perverted and ruined. Your mistake was letting them take your name and your voice. You think without giant robots, there wouldn't have been wars in the 20th century? You're right. I've been living death for too long. Until this assassin finds me, I'm going to make the most of my life as Dr. Jan Schmidt, good guy roboticist. <laughs> I can't believe I've been working so close to you for all these years. Maybe we could have helped each other through, work through our trauma much sooner. Things happen when they happen, Ms. Deshaun. I'm glad you have such a zen approach to life, Dr. Schmidt, the deadly clockmaker. You! I'm not just a janitor. 
I'm also Cypress's avenging angel. A Christmas angel! Why are you here? I'm going to kill your buddy. I, I'm not really sure why that's not obvious. <laughs> but I'm a witness. Are you going to kill me too? Certainly not. When I killed Herman Meyer, I was too good at my job. It went unreported. The nation states that kept my people down did not shake in their boots. Now that I've confirmed Schmidt's identity, I want a witness. I want the papers to know exactly who I've killed and why. I'm not a monster, Schmidt. I'm an honorable man. I'll give you a moment to make your peace. Thank you. And thank you for allowing me this last chance to put something good in the world. Oh yeah, the Roomba. Really gonna balance your karma with that one, murderer. Speaking of balance... What? Ah! Not my Achilles heel! That's my Achilles heel! Ha <laughs> ha! I've got his gun, Flanders! Give it back to him. No! Janitor, um, whatever your name is. Eddie? Eddie, nice, cool. Eddie. <laughs> See, I never got to, to have a dad, and now that I finally met someone with so much to teach me, I'm not gonna let you take him away. Even if he wants you to shoot him as some sort of absolution, you can't do it. Because drowning in self-pity is no way for a genius to die. If you want revenge for Cypress, try disarming the military-industrial complex. That's a tall order. You think that's difficult? Try opposing the might of a fully operational Roomba, running on the unstoppable power of Christmas spirit. <laughs> Right on, little buddy. All who oppose me shall die! Science! I'll get you yet, Jan Schmidt. I'm fine with that. You haven't seen the last of Eddie the janitor! <laughs> so now my secret's out. Everyone in the world is going to know my new identity. I'll be lucky to survive the week. Longer than you had a minute ago. How are you going to spend it? I guess I'll make the most of Christmas. That's the spirit, old man. Now, these dangerous toasters you were telling me about, they work on bread. You have been listening to the Cyber Cafe Holiday Special. It's been a grueling experience, but you made it to the home stretch. Both of our shorts tonight were written by Abby Ditton. The former was directed by Michael Chow, and the latter can hardly be said to have had direction. Cyber Cafe was recorded by its star vocal team of Alexandria Ortiz, Abby Ditton, Ken Cosby, and Hollywood Steve Huey. The killbot that saved Christmas starred Jenna Civic, Siva, Ian Insect. Madeline Glamour, Louis Moore, and Tamara Siegert. Siegert, no, you got that one right. 